We're gonna be in we're gonna be in Esther chapter three. Boy, that needs to come up a little bit. Esther chapter 3. It's going to need to come up a little bit. Wait. Okay, we'll pray. Lord, thank you for this this time. Thank you for your word, for your spirit that's with us, Lord. Be with us. Uh, help us to understand your word and apply it to our lives. And, and uh, just guide us through this week to come, Lord. Thank you. Amen. So Esther 3, verse 1. After these things did King Asuerus promote Haman, the son of, of Hamadetha, the Agagite, and advance him and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. And the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed and reverenced Haman. For the king had so commanded concerning him, but Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence. Then the king's servants, which were in the king's gate, said unto Mordecai, Why transgress thou the king's commandment? Now it came to pass, when they spoke daily unto him, and he hearkened not unto them, that they told Haman uh, to see whether Mordecai's matters would stand, for he had told them that he was a Jew. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then was Haman full of wrath. And he thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone, for they had shown him the for they had shown him the people of Mordecai, wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Azuerus, even the people of Mordecai. In the first month, that is the month of Nisan, in the twelfth year of King Azuerus, they cast uh, per, that is, uh, the lot, before Haman from day to day and from month to month and to the twelfth month that is in the month of Adar. And Haman said unto King Azuerus, There is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the providence of, of thy kingdom, and their laws are diverse from all people. Neither keep they the king's laws. Therefore, it is not for the king's profit to suffer them. If it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed, and I will pay ten thousand talents of silver to the hand of those that have charge of the business to bring it into the king's treasury. And the king took his ring from his hand and gave it unto Haman, the son of of Hamadatha, the Agagite, the, the Jew's enemy. And the king said unto Haman, The silver is given, uh, is given to thee, the people also, to do with them as it seems good to thee. Then were the king's scribes called on the thirteenth day of the first month, and there was written according to all that uh, Haman had commanded unto the king's lieutenant, and to the governors that were over every providence, and to rule from every people, every province, uh, according 
according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their language. In the name of King Ajuarus it was written and sealed with the king's ring. And the letters were sent by post to all the king's province uh, to destroy, to kill, and to cause to perish all Jews, both young and old, little children and women, in one day, even upon the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month Adar, and to take the spoil of them for prey. The copy of, of the writing for a commandment to be given in every province was published unto all people, that they should be ready against that day. This post went out, being hastened by the king's commandment, and, and the decree was given in Shushan, the palace. And the king and Haman sat down to drink, but the city Shushan was, per, was perplexed. So he had this plot by Haman. He didn't like having, you know, he had pride in, in his position in, in, in himself. So he had a plot to, to kill the Jews, to be able to, to get back at Mordecai and his people. Because uh, he, wanted, he, wanted uh, he, he wanted reverence paid to him and uh, for them to bow down to him. But Mordecai wasn't going to do it. He wasn't going to bow down to any, any, anybody but God. And so... He, he wanted to get back at him and the Jews and had this plot that so far seems to be working. And so a plot to kill him and the Jews. We'll go to Proverbs 8. Proverbs 8, 31. Maybe that was it. Oh, 13, not 31. That'll make a big difference. God hates pride and arrogancy. He hates evil ways. And he hates people uh, who, who, who think that way and speak that way. Uh, the the yeah the evil ways in which they do so God's definitely not and we have that of course in in our own lives we have different people who do things that they could they even even the rulers of our of of our of our land the people that put in charge they'll they'll do different things against God they whether they mean to do it that for against God or not but they do and but we don't need to worry about what there is to come. We can see the nation, you know, sliding farther and farther from God, but they're just doing what they what they what they want to do. They're doing the way things are in their in their own hearts because they don't they don't because they don't have Christ. So, but we don't need to fear them and fear what might to come. Uh, we'll go to eleven Proverbs eleven two. Proverbs 11.2, when pride comes, then comes shame, but with the lowly is wisdom. Yes, eventually, whether in this life or in the next, we, there will be shame when, when people have pride in themselves and pride in their, their own accomplishments and pride in their own, in their own ways that uh, they look at themselves, you know, the, the, the builder that was going to build his barns and everything. He didn't look to God. He looked to himself. I will do this. I will do that. And, and, but he was looking to himself. Well, he, you, have those, you have those things in which we do, in which you, you realize he can build barns. He might have had need and necessity, but he never did look to God for it. He looked to him on his own self and his own ways. But there will come shame, whether it be in this life or the next. There, you will, there will be the, the payment for the sin that we have. Uh, six, Proverbs 16, 17.
The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keeps his ways preserves his soul. Pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Better is it to be, to be a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Yes, it's better to be humble in heart, to not have pride, and you realize that that, that way is easy. It's easy to be prideful in your own ways, but there will be a payment, there will be a spoil for having that kind of a heart, uh, heart before God. There will be a, there will be a payment in the, in the end, but and it's a it's a great big fast highway only to one place, but that's why God puts us out here is to declare His word to try to turn them from those ways and show them what they should by us acting in the way we're supposed to, then we show them the way things are supposed to be and then tell them God's word. Uh, Proverbs twenty nine. Proverbs twenty nine twenty three. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Yes, uh, your pride shall eventually, in the end, bring you low. But but we should have the we should have a humble spirit, and it will hold us through because that's that's what God loves. There's somebody with a humble spirit who will do what he says we will do his will and do it right. Uh, we'll go to James 4. From whence comes wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your even of your lusts that war in your members? You lust and have not. You kill and desire uh, you kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you have not, because you ask not. You ask and receive not, because you ask amiss that you might consume it upon your own lusts. You adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whoever where, therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit that dwells in us lusts to envy, but he gives more grace. Wherefore, he said... God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Yes, we have those things that war within us, and we can't do it on our own. We need to, we need to give it to God and give it to him, because he's the one who will truly do it. All that other stuff we are, we are to put behind us. But as it says, we can't be proud about all of this. We don't accomplish anything. We can't accomplish anything, but we need to submit ourselves and, resi and then resist the devil, and he will flee. If we just try to resist him in our own strength, that's a worthless thing to do. The world can't do it. The whole, whole Old Testament shows us that it can't be done. But if we submit ourselves to God, then he will help and he will do the work. As it says, draw nigh to him, draw near to him, and he will draw near to us. He is faithful, and we can look to him. Keep ourselves humble, and he will lift us up. First John chapter two. First uh, John two fifteen. Uh, 
Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof, and he that does the will of God abides forever. We're not to love the things of the world and the ways of the world. They do things completely opposite from the way God would have them done. And we need to look to him and not look to our own selves or our own pride like the world does. They're, they're proud about all their different things and their accomplishments, but it's God that gives them strength. It's God that helps, that, that gives them the ability to be able to do these things. It's all from him. He could take it all away and they could do nothing. But he wants to he wants to draw them to him, and we need to keep that humble spirit and to do his will. We'll go to Romans twelve. Romans 12:16 Be of the same mind one towards another mind not high things but condescend to men of low esteem be not wise in your own conceit recompense no man evil for evil provide things honest in the sight of all men so he wants us he wants us not to be proudful against each other, not to be, not to think of ourselves highly than, more highly than we ought, but to humble ourselves and be a be of low, be of a low state, to lower ourselves around each other, that that we keep, that we have a love and a care for one another. But remember, we are not wise; we do not have true wisdom, but God does. He will help us and. We don't want to repay any evil for evil, but to look to those things that are honest and good. Uh, Philippians 2. Philippians 2, verse 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than themselves. Isn't that the way things the world does things, through strife and vainglory? That, that useless glory that they put on themselves that they think that I've done this and I've done that, but they have done nothing really in the sight of God. Absolutely nothing. It's all just junk and garbage. As Paul noticed in his own life, all those things that he strove for in all of his life, but yet in the end he realized it was nothing because it wasn't done for God. It wasn't done his way, but we need to, we need to be lowly and, and humble and realize we can't do it without him. Uh, Isaiah 41. Verse 8, Isaiah 41, 8. But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend, thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth, and called thee from the chief men, thereof, and said unto thee, Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee, and cast and not cast thee away. Fear not, for I am with thee, and be not dismayed, for I am thy God, I will strengthen thee, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with thy right hand of righteous with with the, with the right hands of righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. 
they shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. So God has some, some things to say about those that come against his people. And, is, and they, will come, they might come against us, they might come against the Jewish people, but in the end, if, it's, if it doesn't happen that, that God brings some sort of, some sort of thing when, uh, that seems to almost naturally come from the countries around, but everybody's against the Jews, then he will just come do it himself uh, in the end. In the end, that's what's going to happen. They're going to come against his people, the Jewish people, and he will come and fix that all, all on his own. But then the world, will, the world will see that God is God, and he means what he says. Uh, Joshua 1.9. Joshua 1 9 have not I commanded thee be strong and of good courage be not afraid neither be thou dismayed for the Lord thy God is with thee where where whither thou goes so God is with us God is always with us he's there and he he is he is the one that's strong but we can be strong because he is strong and because he's with us and he is it's not a suggestion, it's something that he tells us to do, to be strong and courageous before, before those things, before the things of the world, but yet be humble and lowly and realize that God is with us. We don't need to be dismayed or, or afraid, or, but he's there all the time, and we can always look to him. We'll go to Ephesians 5.21. Ephesians 5.21, submit yourselves one to another in the fear of God. So God doesn't want anybody holding anything above anything else. Yeah, below that it says, wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands. But realize that God doesn't want people to be, to be and have a, have a high estate of themselves, but to humble themselves, to submit themselves one to another, because we have a love and a care for one another. We actually, we want to serve one another. The leaders aren't called to be a leader to lead and, and, and hold everything above, but to lead by serving those around them, to, to give them themselves and their time. God has a different way of doing things, and he wants us to, to do things his way because it shows the world who God truly is. I mean, he humbled himself and came down from heaven and became a man that is lower than, than the angels, that he said is lower than the angels and took upon himself flesh. I mean, what more humbling can there really be? And yet he could have come down here in glory and just ended it all, but then we'd all be in a huge amount of trouble. But, uh, but he loved us so much that, that, that he did things the way he did. We'll go to 1 Peter 5. First Peter five five. Likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility, for God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time casting all your cares upon him for he cares for you so that he gives us direction on what we're supposed to do submit one to another humble humble ourselves before one another and before god and he will and he will help us we can cast our cares upon him he is mighty to to handle all of it he can handle everybody's cares all at once 
He doesn't he doesn't need to do one at a time or anything. He doesn't need extra help or time or anything like that. He has the ability to do all all that he says he will do. And as it as it was uh as it was in uh, earlier back in James, submit ourselves to God, resist the devil and he will free flee. He's the one we need to submit to. He's the one we need to hum be humble before and have that humble spirit towards towards all. So and so when we look back in the Old Testament with Esther, we see that that all of this stuff that was happening, but Mordecai did what was right in the sight of God. He did he did what was right in the in the in the sight of God. And so he didn't he knew I they will fear and they'll have, but God will bring, they will have some fear over what might happen, but God will bring the, uh, God will bring the, uh, the solution for it. So we know that God has a solution up for us too. We don't need to be afraid with what happens. We don't need to be worried about where we might go and what we might do. We can, we can look towards him. So we should pray. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for your encouragement, Lord. Please help us. We have no ability to be strong in this world, but with you, you are strong. You are righteous, and you have shown us the right way, Lord. Please help us. We have no strength to do your word, but we know that you are mighty. Please be with us, Lord, and guide us through this week to come. Help us with the service to come, Lord, and uh, and just just may your spirit, Lord, show us everything we need. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Probably did. <laughs> to the world, yeah. But be transformed. Of the mind. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is a good one too. Yeah, there are a lot of good ones. This could go on for a while.